today in conversation with Ryan as our involved partner, who's our director of policy here at the Wilson Institute. The general idea of the book can be summed up by the subtitle, How a Focus on Health Can Revive Canadian Democracy. The general idea is that we've got a, a political situation that is turning people off. We have decreasing voter turnout, decreasing participation in the political process. And that a lot of that is because there's a, a general sense that uh, those who are our elected representatives are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're either uh, engaging in outright corruption uh, or they're running on one thing and doing another, or they're just participating in bad behavior, uh, acting like uh, misbehaving children in the legislature and parliament. They should be doing what's good for us. They should be working to build a better society for, for everyone involved. And they should be doing what we want. They should be actively engaging in democracy, involving citizens, and in, in making the uh, important decisions uh, to get to that better society. My argument is that health really is a very good focus to bring us back to the way that things are supposed to be going. Because A, it is what's good for us. If we look at the WHO definition, health not just being the absence of illness, but full social, physical, and mental well-being, that seems like a pretty good shorthand for what our goals should be as a society. And it's what we want. We talk about it all the time. Healthy debate, healthy appetite, healthy relationships. Uh, our language is replete with uh, references to health if we're celebrating close to each other's health. Uh, and it's reflected in our in our public polling as well with health care. As you well know, obviously health care is, is what we do when we fail to keep people healthy. But it's a good substitute for just how important uh, health is in our lives. If we are wanting to have a, a truly healthy society, we need to move upstream. We need to focus on what makes a real difference in health outcomes, and that's income, education, uh, housing, nutrition. So in the book, I outline that argument for a couple of chapters, and then uh, dig into specific determinants, starting off each chapter with a, a story from my practice. Uh, and maybe the stories are part of it. What, what do you think about that? How do we, there's all this discussion you say, how do you frame the big ideas? So how do we make it? social terms of health understandable and actionable. It's well known in academic circles, in policy circles, that it hasn't made that leap into the public discourse. It hasn't made the leap into media. It hasn't made the leap into how governments present the ideas that uh, they have, how parties uh, discuss their plans. So how do, we, how do we do that? How do we make that framing change to make the leap? It is a bit surprising that uh, to a lot of people that the wealthy people in the unequal societies actually have worse health outcomes than if they were at the same socioeconomic level in a more equal society. And that to me is a really useful piece of knowledge uh, in framing because it allows us to go beyond talking about the determinants of health and addressing equality in society as something we're doing for those people. Uh, the people who are at the lower end of socioeconomic status and reframing it as something we're doing for all of us. Like Saskatoon, is, we always sort of see it as this real beacon of inspiration with the Regional Health Authority and, and some of the other stuff. But give us a few local examples and maybe some of the folks here can, can, uh, we can talk about some of the local things that people are involved in here for, for on the ground addressing those determinants. And, and providing better care. What does better care look like for, for really poor people? One of the stories I start up, off with here is the story of Station 20 West. And Station 20 West is a project uh, that was a combination of our community health center, the West Side Community Clinic. Uh, there's a, a library and an affordable housing uh, center that were built just before the Station 20 was meant to be. So this was a collaboration that built up over a number of years. The University of Saskatchewan was involved, the government was involved, and the government of Saskatchewan offered $8 million to this project, uh, actually delivered it to the health region, and they were set to uh, break ground. And then an election happened uh, in 2007, and we elected the Saskatchewan party, and they took the money back. They said, sorry, that $8 million, we're going to use it for something else. 
we don't think we should be helping uh, build grocery stores is the way they sold it. Uh, and as a result, uh, there was a lot of uh, there were thousands of people in the street thinking this was a good idea that this go forward and it was a bad idea that they take the money away. Uh, the end of the story, and, and it's in the last chapter as well as kind of a bookend, is despite that, the members of the community said, no, we really still want this. This really still matters to us. So that to me is one really good example of a project that is looking at the various determinants of health. There's work there around employment. There's work there around uh, access to food, around nutrition, around health services. Really touching on a lot of the determinants of health in one place in an area where people are going to hear almost universal approval for Medicare. And that's why uh, governments like Mr. Harper's don't attack Medicare directly, they attack it through stealth. Um, cutting research that <coughs> goes on around it, cutting specific vulnerable populations services, but not cutting, cutting the, not cutting cut off. So some of what we need to do is have that conversation with the other way about how that kind of cuts, how those changes really will impact the services they get. But I think it's also about a values conversation. Um, something the something the right wing has done really well, and many of you have read the work of George Lakoff and others who talk about uh, the sort of stern father framing the, the things are really bad right now, and you need to just buck up and trust us, and we'll do it right. It really touches people in a, in a certain way. There's an emotional response, and, and we all follow that to some degree. This is about getting to a, a different framing, finding something else that uh, touches people's hearts, and, uh, and finding a way to talk to them about issues through an emotional as well as an intellectual lens. Actually, I thought one of the things in your, your, in your book that was really interesting was you were calling for less politics and more democracy, and building on all of, all of these points. Is, were you thinking there about more local, more participatory methods? In the case of Tadali, the new place we were working with, in Mozambique, uh, the main issue that they identified was malaria, and then we sat with them a little longer and tried to figure out how can we find out what's going on with malaria, and ended up walking house to house throughout uh, several villages uh, in a large area, just finding out what was happening. Through that process and through analyzing with the community, what they identified was people weren't sleeping in their bed nets, the bed nets weren't available. So we started a, a Bennett program with this new place actually raising some money, buying a whole bunch, selling them, uh, and uh, then did a follow-up research study to see who was using the Bennett. <coughs> and that seemed to me like it's a very small example, one small project, but a really interesting way to involve local people in identifying the problems they're facing, identifying the needs to address them, and assessing whether or not they've been successful. And to my mind, that's the sort of thing we actually could do quite easily here in Canada without needing to replace in any way the provincial, the municipal, the federal levels that we have. It's just an added level of participation that could inform those representative levels. Jeff Mulgan, a uh, uh, policy and uh, leading policy thought leader in the UK, made an observation that. Uh, our government does, are really set up based on a 19th century uh, bureaucratic model where we have housing delivered in this silo and income in this silo and education in this silo and health and so on. They don't really inform each other. While there may have been some some good reason in the 19th century for the Brits to set up that model and bless the world with it, but uh, it seems to frustrate our attempts. So I wonder if you have any thoughts in terms of um, how we uh, sort of move, uh, move forward in this glorious notion of joined up government or the idea that government actually is sophisticated enough to get beyond the silos and to integrate the various kinds of interventions that are needed in order to actually address the range of human needs. We've also got silos within uh, my, my own field of health service uh, is very divided and I think some of, the, some of the first work has to happen actually within those houses. Half of the funds that 
I received from this book, go to an organization called SWIFT, and that's a student wellness initiative toward community health. It's a student-run clinic. It's not a medical student-run clinic. It's medicine, nursing, pharmacy, nutrition, dentistry, veterinary medicine, uh, arts and science, social work, clinical psychology. What started as uh, very simply clinical services uh, expands and expands and expands to programming. Uh, programming, we now have uh, all kinds of educational programming, but also uh, skills training programming, CPR training for people in the, in the neighborhoods so they can get tickets to be able to get uh, more employment opportunities. There's a, a real expansion of the idea of what it is to offer health services among these very junior health professionals. And there's also a real melting of uh, hierarchies and walls between the different professions. It's a very micro model, and, I, and that's, I guess, how uh, I like to start is start with a story, start with something on a micro level, and then we can talk about how, yeah, every ministry really should be part of the ministry of health. Uh, every, everything should be connected to what we want as a society. We want better health outcomes. We want to, we want to live better lives. Um, and the integration and, and weaving that needs to happen. Sometimes I, I think of I think of what I see on the walk to work. Um, I see very young women uh, who I, I know the health problems that they have because they're in my clinic, and I see them working in the street, and I, I see them uh, not having a, a safe place to stay, and I see them skinny because they are on drugs or skinny because they don't have access to good nutrition. And it's almost like walking by a protest. It's the way their voice is being heard right now. It's, it's an awful way that that's how desperate their lives are. But they don't have a voice. They don't have a placard. The, uh, the argument before you is that the determinants of health really isn't that understood by the general public, that it's a concept that has uh, resonance in our value system and also is an effective concept in that it also gives us a way to measure our success. Uh, if we use human health as sort of the canary in the coal mine of our health of our whole society, we use the determinants of health lens as the way to talk about how we achieve better human health. I really think that opens up the kind of conversation that can change the world. If we start telling the stories, uh, both of the people at the lowest end of the socioeconomic scale who are suffering the most from the fact that we're not addressing this, all the way up to those who are wealthy and are not actually going to have as good of lives as they would have in a more equal society, in a society where fewer people were living in poverty and privation. That's the kind of conversation that I think could actually inform public debate, inform policy, and maybe change the world. We'll see you all soon at something else here. Thanks very much.